it's a really big month for you, Virgo. <clears throat> it's September 2020. I'm back after a, uh, a brief interlude, uh, death in the family. My mother passed away, as some of you probably know, but I'm back on board now and very, very keen to talk to you about what's happening in your horoscope for sun sign or rising sign or even the lunar sign of Virgo, if you know what your lunar sign is. Let's activate this now and take a look, especially straight off the mark, the full moon that's taking place here in this seventh house, a very key part of your horoscope because that's all to do with your relationships. But the conjunction there with, with Neptune can, and also this opposition that we see to Mercury uh, can create some confusion in your relationship. So clarity, clarity and more clarity is absolutely necessary. And that's necessary up until the uh, 6th or 7th. Here we see the transit of the darkening moon in your 8th house. This is the house of intimacy and its connection with Mars here is not at all conducive to happiness. Mars is the ruler of your eighth house and co-ruler of your third house. So for Virgo, for you, this is not a particularly friendly planet. It also makes you somewhat accident prone. So you have to be a little bit careful, especially there around the seventh. On the sixth, Mercury moves into the finance sector. Some sudden and abrupt things can happen at that point, along with Mercury moving into finance sector in the sign of Libra, we see Venus, uh, the ruler of your luck, one of the karmic planets moving into the 12th house. So when that moon made that connection with Uranus, some unexpected expenses, unexpected loss of friends or some problems in the relationship, which we saw there from that moon Neptune connection earlier on as the month commenced. It's nice to see, however, that the way you spend your money and the way you earn your money can be in harmony, especially in the first few days of that movement of Venus and Mercury, balancing your expenses with your income. The other thing on the 11th, a couple of days earlier to what you're seeing on the date here, this is the big thing. Mars in retrogression, retrograde Mars in your eighth house of intimacy. So this is interesting. You may want intimacy, but you'll be pulling back. You may want closeness with your lover. You may want to delve more deeply into the nature of your relationship, but you may have problems with that. Mars, as I said, is not friendly to you. So that can cause all sorts of conflicts, especially if you keep your eye on the moon and other planets as the red color here. Look at that, the, the, the Mars, sorry, the Uranus and the Venus combination will add weight to that Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn square. These are all tight, hard aspects. Look at this on the, on the 17th, the new moon taking place in your sun sign again in that opposition to Neptune. That is again about relationships. It's about clarifying what you want from the relationship. And there's no doubt that that sexual or intimate part of your nature is going to need to be carefully looked at. <clears throat> This eighth house is a hidden house, so often it's not easy to get down underneath what's causing all these problems. Fortunately, there on the 20th, you see the transit of the moon in the third house of communication. Again, a little bit strung out by that influence of Uranus. But here I wait for the blue triangular aspect to Mars. And that's going to happen just about here around the 23rd and at the same time we're going to see the important ingress of the sun into Libra there on the 23rd which again accentuates your interest in money earning potential because Mercury rules Gemini which is your career sector so strong intimate link there the word intimacy is coming out a lot and it's also coming out with your intimate knowledge of the community, the marketplace, you see this north node here and Mercury are in a favorable aspect at that time. Now there's Mercury in an opposition to Mars, not good. That can give conflicts, disputes, arguments, even litigation because we see Venus here in the 12th house while that Mercury 
opposite retrograde Mars in the eighth house, not just the house of intimacy, that is a house of shared resources, banking, finance, taxes, all that sort of stuff. Mercury moves on the 24th um, into the third house of contracts, negotiations. So I dare say, especially with the moon moving there into the seventh house of public relations, an opportunity around the 29th and 30th, just as that moon swings back to where it was at the outset of the month, an opportunity to negotiate your way out of any problems in relationships and in particular any problems that may arise as a result of differences of opinion over money, earnings, career, savings, the money that you have tied in with other people, most notably your partner if you're married or in a long-term relationship. Do take note of that and also this Mars in the 8th house can be a little bit dangerous. We're going to look at that next month because uh, the sun is going to move into the opposition and I want to talk about that. So a little bit more care. You need to prepare for that. Make sure that your health and your vitality and your immune system are strong in the coming three or four weeks. Learn a little more about your star sign and what's happening for you, Virgo, at astrology.com.au, my website, the daily, monthly, weekly now. And yearly reading is going to help give you some more support to what I've said here in a very fast paced, what I call Oracle Express. Subscribe and I'll see you here next month. Take care. Bye bye.